Get started with Django User Management. If you finish the first part of this series, then you may already have a lot of ideas for your own Django applications. At some point, you might decide to extend them with user accounts. In this step-by-step -step course, you'll learn how to work with Django User Management and add it to your program. By the end of this course, you'll be able to create an application where users can register, log in, reset and change passwords on their own, edit the default Django templates responsible for user management, send password reset emails to real email addresses, and authenticate using an external service. So now you know what's going to be covered, let's get started. Setting up the Django project. This course uses Django 4.0.2 and Python 3.10. It focuses on user management, so you won't use any advanced or responsive styling. It also doesn't deal with groups and permissions, only creating and managing user accounts. It's a good idea to use a virtual environment when working with Python projects. That way, you can always be sure that the Python command points to the right version of Python and that the modules required by your project have the correct versions. To learn more about this, check out this real Python course. To create a virtual environment, run the following command. On Linux and Mac OS, this is the command you'll need to activate the virtual environment. In Windows, this is the command you'll need to activate the virtual environment. These next two lines upgrade pip and install the correct version of Django. Now that the environment is ready, you can create a new project and an application to store all your user management code. In this example, your application is called Users. To install it, you need to modify settings.py and add it to the list of installed apps, as seen on screen. The next step is to apply the migrations and run the server. This will create all user-related models in the database and start the application at the address seen on screen. In this course, you'll be using Django's built-in user model. In practice, you would more likely create a custom user model extending the functionality offered by Django. You can read more about customizing the default user model in Django's documentation. There's one more thing you should do for this setup. By default, Django enforces strong passwords to make user accounts less prone to attacks but you'll be changing passwords often during the course of this course and figuring out a strong password each time would be inconvenient. You can solve this issue by disabling password validators in settings. Just comment them out, leaving an empty list as seen on screen. Now Django will allow you to set passwords like password or even pass, making your work with the user management system much easier. But remember, the validators should be left enabled in any actual application. For this course, it will also be useful to have access to the admin panel so you can track newly created users and their passwords. Go ahead and create a super user as seen on screen. With the password validators disabled, you can use any password you like. In the next section of the course, you'll get started with the project proper by creating a dashboard view. Creating a dashboard view. 
Most user management systems have some sort of main page, usually known as a dashboard. You'll create a dashboard in this section, but because it won't be the only page in your application, you'll also create a base template to keep the looks of the website consistent. Here, you won't be using any of Django's advanced template features, but if you do need a refresher on the template syntax, then you might want to check out Django's template documentation at the address seen on screen. All templates used in this course should be placed in the user's templates directory. If the course mentions a template file users dashboard.html, then the actual file path is users templates users dashboard.html. For base.html, the actual path is users templates base.html, and so on. The users templates directory doesn't exist by default, so you'll have to create it first. Here are the commands for Linux and Mac OS. And here are the commands for Windows. The structure of your project will then look as seen on screen. Create a base template called base.html with the content seen on screen. This base template doesn't do very much. It shows the message welcome to awesome website and defines a block called content. This block is empty for now and other templates are going to use it to include their own content. Now you can create a template for the dashboard. It should be called users dashboard.html and should look as seen on screen. This doesn't add a lot to the base template yet. It just shows the welcome message with the current user's username. If a user isn't logged in, then Django will still set the user variable using an anonymous user object. An anonymous user always has an empty username, so the dashboard will show hello guest. For your template to work, you need to create a view that renders it and a URL that uses the view, as seen on screen. Next, create a user's urls.py file and add the path for the dashboard view. Finally, add your application's URLs to the project's URLs, as seen on screen. You can now test the dashboard view. Open the address seen on screen, and you should see a web page similar to this one. Next, open the admin panel at the address seen on screen and log in as the admin user. When you return to the dashboard, it should look different. As you can see, your new template correctly displays the name of the currently logged in user. Now that you have a working dashboard, in the next section, you'll start working with Django User Management. Working with Django User Management A complete website needs more than just a dashboard. 
Luckily, Django has a lot of user management related resources that will take care of almost everything, including login, logout, password change, and password reset. Templates aren't part of those resources though, you'll have to create them on your own. Start by adding the URLs provided by the Django authentication system into your application. This will give you access to all of the following URLs seen on screen. This might seem a bit overwhelming, but don't worry. In the following sections of the course, you'll learn what each of these URLs does and how to add them to your application. Return to your browser and go to the login address as seen on screen. You'll be greeted with an error, but don't worry. Django's error message is telling you that it can't find the template needed for the login page. So in the next video, you'll see what's needed to get logins up and running. Logging in and out. As you saw in the last section, Django will try to use a template called registrationlogin.html, which currently doesn't exist, leading to the error that you saw. Go ahead and create it using the code seen on screen to display a login heading followed by a login form. The CSRF token line inserts a cross-site request forgery CSRF token, which is required by every Django form to help ensure security. Django uses a dictionary, also known as a context, to pass data to a template while rendering it. In this case, a variable called form will already be included in the context. All you need to do is display it. Using form.as underscore p will render the form as a series of HTML paragraphs. This makes it look a bit nicer than just using form. Finally, there's a button for submitting the form and at the end of the template, a link that will take your users back to the dashboard. Head back to your browser and refresh the login page. It should now appear in a basic form with the username and password fields present, along with the login button. You can further improve the looks of the form by adding a small CSS script to the base template, as seen on screen. By adding the code you've just seen to the base template, you'll improve the looks of all of your forms, not just the one in the dashboard. Refreshing the page once more should see a login page with improved appearance. Use the credentials of your admin user and press login, but don't be alarmed if you see an error, as you'll see on screen. According to the error message, Django can't find a path for accounts, profile, which is the default destination for your users after a successful login. Instead of creating a new view, it makes much more sense to reuse the dashboard view here. Fortunately, Django makes it easy to change the default redirection. All you need to do is add one line at the end of the settings file. Try to log in again, and this time you should be redirected to the dashboard without any errors. Now your users can log in, but it's probably a good idea to let them log out as well. This process is more straightforward because there's no form, they just need to click a link. After that, Django will redirect your users to accounts log out and will try to use a template called registration logout.html. However, just like before, you can change that redirection. For example, it would make sense to redirect your users back to the dashboard. As you may already have guessed, all you need to do is add one line at the end of the settings file.
Now that both login and logout are working, it's a good idea to add proper links to your dashboard. If a user is logged in, then user.isauthenticated will return true and the dashboard will show the logout link. If a user is not logged in, then the user variable will be set to anonymous user and user.isauthenticated will return false. In that case, the login link will be displayed. The updated dashboard should look as seen on screen for non-authenticated users. And when you're logged in, you should see something similar to what's being seen on screen now. Congratulations! You just completed the most important part of the user management system, logging users in and out of the application. But there are a couple more steps ahead of you, so in the next section you'll take a look at what's needed to allow users to manage their own passwords.